Coming up, once Noah Clowney took the court last season for the Brooklyn Nets, it was everything we could have hoped for and more. And yet, year two will require even more from the second year player that we have now attached our franchise hopes to. We dive in on all the stats that matter most coming up next. You are locked on Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. He's Doug Norrie. I'm Adam Armbrecht. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We're 100% free on all those great platforms. And let you know, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now, through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get three weeks of a free trial for the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. And Doug... Noah Clowney, the topic at hand, the man with a plan, the kid that we thought talked to me in 2029 when he finally develops. Turns out he was ready to roll last season, gets on the court, looks pretty darn good. But now expectations rise, as is always the case in the NBA. Yeah, look, and when you're a team in the position the Nets are in, um, you have to grab on to the you know, sort of glimmers of short-term hope that you have and, and also really latch on to guys who you can see there being there for the long term, right? We talked yesterday yep. about like who could be some stopgap scorers uh, for this team, like who could maybe step up in terms of like sort of on-ball creation. But a lot of that was just kind of like, hey, we got this year to worry about and we'll think about the future later. But Clowney yep. represents one of, I think, the kind of sort of rare upside guys that the Nets have. They have a few guys like this now, but not many, especially compared to the rest of the NBA. Um, of guys who you can kind of dream on and like, hey, what could this look like in four or five years, right? Yeah. When when we're reaching sort of like prime or, you know, first contract, second contract stuff, you know, what, you know, who's uh, who on this team could really, really pop. And Clowney, based on what we saw last year, based on just the measurables, based on sort of everything you hear about him too, just like the way he ingests the game and how, you know, just sort of like, just I would frankly just intelligent he is um all this other stuff it's a it, there's no reason there's no secret why Nets fans are really excited about it and I think this is actually one of those rare cases and I got this from talking to Josh Lloyd on foot locked on fantasy the other day is that Nets fans are very early to this Noah Clowney party in a way that the rest of the NBA is not yet, but probably will be soon. And that's yeah. an exciting thing to think about, I think, as it's you know, sort of where the team is concerned. You know, we're going to talk about, obviously, stats from last year, what to expect this season, maybe combinations on the current roster that, that'll help him expand his game in that way. But it's funny because you mentioned that, one, it feels reminiscent. These players already, we, we could tell from last season, are not going to be similar when you look at Nicholas Claxton. But it does feel like it, it. this is now where the fan base is attaching themselves to, like they did a handful of years ago. It was always, well, just you know, Nicholas Claxton. No one's given enough respect. He's so defensive, versatile. Oh, you should see the way he can run the open court. And aspects of his game never quite developed to the point where you could start to demand the rest of the NBA league take notice of him offensively specific, right? Doesn't mean he still isn't a really valuable player, but it didn't have the same cachet that started to grow around the league in the way that, you know, it's funny with Cam Thomas. Okay, it's offense. Offense is what gets people excited. Offense is what moves the needle in terms of how you're viewed around the NBA. So I think Noah Clowney showed that baseline this past season already. The one thing at a high level I want to ask you your opinion on is do we think that the excitement attached to Noah Clowney and the expectations coming into this year two is going to be impacted by his performance relative to what's coming next season, the draft, the next guy. Like the fan base is already talking so much about, we'll tank, we'll get Cooper flag and everything will be great. But Noah Clowney, as you mentioned, like he is going to be a core member of this team. So how will the success and failures of this year impact that I think becomes interesting from how the fan base talks about him and how they treat him over the course of the year. You mean how to like, how, like does this, how will this season impact like the long-term outlook? Is that what you mean? No, even, yeah, yeah. The the long term outlook and how the fan base will react if, let's say, midway through the season, Noah Clowney goes through a massive slump and doesn't quite look oh, the part, gotcha. or we're not sure. Remember, because he's young, right? And you go, oh, it doesn't matter. It's really about Cooper Flag. It's really about next year's draft. And I, I don't want the fan base to lose sight of. I want them to go with the hype of, hey, we were here first. 
And this kid is going to be as important next season as he is this season right now as he develops. Yeah, you know, that's a good question. No, so I think that I think that with Clowney, where the where the Nets are, expectations are so low around the team that really I I, I don't think this will even be the case, but I think he could actually just do kind of anything. And mm -hmm. it wouldn't temper the excitement too much. One, he's 20 years old, right? Like he's, he just turned 20 years old, right? He's like, this is like, he just turned 20 years old in, in July. So he's so young, right? He's so young that he has years to kind of like reach potential here. So even if there's growing pains, which I'm sure there will be around different aspects of his game, like I, it's just totally fine, I think. And I don't think it will temper... I don't think we need to temper expectations, but I also think we don't need to temper excitement based on, you know, if there was just, you know, some lumpiness around the performance. And, right. I, and I think that's fine. Because one thing that's great with guys like this, honestly, is that when, so with Clowney, when you already probably have one skill that looks like it pretty much all the way plays, and that's defense, once you have that, actually, you can actually go through other parts of your game, especially when you're a big too. Like when you can go through other, maybe like, you know, cold streaks or stuff like that in your game and still like, cause defense isn't really streaky. Right. 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 If a defense isn't a streaky thing. It's like, usually you're pretty consistent and you can get blocks and steals and show your length and be able to guard guys in space and do that stuff. And that doesn't really go through the, the, the variance that maybe like three point shooting does. Right. right, or even just shooting itself. So I think when you have a baseline as a defensive player with an offensive game that can grow, you're a little more immune to some of those other like short term sort of like down swings because you already do this other half really well. Whereas, like, say, I mean, just for example, like Cam Thomas, if you went through like a month long shooting streak of, of like a bad shooting stretch, right? Right. You'd be like, what's going on here? Because you're not, you're not, you're probably not going to make up for it at the other end of the court in right. the same way. A, and that's why bigs are sort of held to a slightly different standard than, like, say, like, on-ball creators. Well, and it's funny, too, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Nicholas Claxton before, it was always the thing. Well, when you come up against these really, you know, we play against Joel Embiid and he's getting beat up in the paint with these bigger bodies, I think that, that, that does get emphasized on the defensive end because you don't have the offensive hat to hang on when you know, all right, you're going to come up against some of these rough matchups and it's not always going to look easy, but this is why you need to be a both ends of the floor player. And ironically, in talking about Thomas and talking about uh, talking about Nick Claxton, they aren't those two-way players at this point of the game, or at least not fully on balance with one end of the court and the other. Noah Clowney represents a guy that can be that player for the Nets, yeah. and he can start to develop that this season. Coming up here in a second, let's remind everybody what Noah Clowney did last year when he got into just 23 games but started four. Oh, baby, it was a beautiful thing. And where those stats can go from here, we'll dive into all that. Coming up in just one moment. All right, before we get that, I'll tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships. Also, what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance. You got superchargers, you got roof racks, you got exhaust kits, you got LED headlights, so much more. Whether you're in the speed power style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guarantee Fit. Your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back with eBay Motors. You're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. Bring home those huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, so as we continue today's Locked On Nets episode, talking about Noah Clowney, what it can look like in year two for him. Obviously, a little tongue-in-cheek at the top, talking about you know hanging all of the franchise hopes on him. But if you're thinking about building up your franchise, and even if you think you're going to spike Cooper flag in the draft next year, guess what? Plenty of young, phenomenal talents play on really bad teams for a long time if you don't have a core of players around them. So seeing someone like Noah Clowney take this leap in the upcoming season would be key to building a strong future for the Brooklyn Nets franchise. 23 games played, as I said, four started last year, average 16 minutes, and it was what you, you choose. Let's start defensively. It was the ability to play versatile defense as a 19-year-old on a frame, as we always say with young guys, that is going to be able to add more muscle and get a little bit more physical. That end of the floor certainly was a good box to check off because in summer league, we watched him play a bit and thought 
boy, he looks lost on, you know, kind of on all ends of the floor, the timing, the rhythm. Very quickly, we saw once he got on the court end of last season. Okay, he's clearly found his footing. And you mentioned appetite for learning, totally dug in on film. You tell him something, he learns it, he applies it. And that seemed to translate very early when he got on the court. Yeah, if I if I pick and choose my spots here with like where to start and stop the stats, I'm going to ch- obviously choose the one that helps the argument the most, but also <laughs> probably the one that is really the most relevant in terms of like when the playing time got consistent. And that was in the month of uh, April, which is the final seven games of the season. The Nets have kind of given up. He gets some starts in here. He starts playing real minutes. I mean, getting up to like 35, 39, 41 minutes in this stretch. But like it really starts with the Indiana game um, where he starts getting 22 minutes. If you look at that stretch of games, which I think is where Nets fans really start to have like the Neo Matrix moments, like he's, you know, (laughs) he's starting to believe. uh, (laughs) um, He's starting to believe kind of moment here where, where it turns it, everyone's switch gets flipped right where it's like oh we're seeing it here it wasn't perfect the whole time if you look at the averages of this you know he averages a 12 and 6 um during that stretch in 29 minutes he uh shoots 47 percent from three on you know almost two and a half takes per game which is yeah. like getting toward actual sort of like real volume again it's a very small sample size but 36 percent for over the course of like the whole year and we've seen that he's very willing to take it so i'm actually not worried about like you know when we talk about the day on sharps and like the clack oh will they ever take it it's like he hit one corner three like let's like you know celebrate this like we won the championship makes we like even attempts that was enough to get us hyped <laughs> Taking above the break threes, you know, pretty quick trigger on some of this stuff. It's going to translate. That volume is just only going to go up, I believe. So you can really start to look at it. And then when you look at defensively, where, you know, he has a seven block game in here. He has a four block game in here. Like these are huge numbers for a guy that's like sort of just, just coming into the league to be able to put up like this kind of like NBA block numbers. Like that's a real thing. Like you can, you can block hunt a little bit in the NBA, you know, the Hassan white sides of the world can go out there and figure out how to get blocks. Cause it like ends up looking good at the end of this year in the stat line. I would not clownies were not of this variety, no. Tra- you know, track down blocks, right? Like weak side help, help, you know, just be, be able to just stand guys up, go vertical. Like he has all those tools. And we, and over those last seven games, it was like very clear that this was not just like flash in the pan stuff. Uh, this yeah. was, something this was a building block not just like you know it's gonna come and go and i think for a 20 year old guy whose body's gonna frame is gonna f- for sure projects like it looks like it's gonna fill out right mm-hmm. sometimes you see these like skinnier guys you're like ah, how much is it gonna fill out he's gonna fill out some right yeah. and yeah but based on all this stuff like those last seven games were just really something to i think they were a, a, a good thing to hang his hat on yeah, no, I mean, listen, he got to the free throw line a little bit over the course of those those last handful of games you mentioned in April as well. Three times, four or more trips to the free throw line. And listen, we talk about like the games that you're playing in and where the competition level is in them. I tell you, like, it's such a silly thing to get encouraged by, but him playing 35, 39, 41 minutes in the final game where he took on the 76ers, obviously, and knocked down a couple of threes in there as well, went 50% from the field, four or five from the line, like 16 points four rebounds, two assists, like it just, you mentioned the blocks as well, but a player, again, I, I, I hate to, cause they are two different things, but it feels like he is, if you took Nicholas Claxton and you said, okay, let's put him into the pod. And now what do we need to sprinkle in to, to make him the next level yeah. of this? It's maybe, okay. The, the ability to get a little bit bigger, as you said, put some, put some meat on the frame. Okay. Some shooting, some outside shooting offensively. All right. Like, and the ability to play big minutes. You know, we talked about this with, with, and I'm not trying to knock Nick Claxton, but when we did our minutes projections. It's impossible to put Nick Claxton down for more than 30 a game because he's never done that. And we said how, you know, he's at a lo- much longer runway of development and building himself up over the first handful of years of his career. But when it comes to a guy like Noah Clowney, it just feels like, oh, and this is why I, I advocated what put him in the starting lineup. Put him in the starting lineup. Dorian Finney Smith, if you're on this roster, you're on the bench because I can go ahead and run this 20 year old kid who's clearly going to have his learning curve moments. But if I can run him out there for 34 minutes a night, along with, you know, Cam Thomas and start to spike him. And I didn't say that in the predictions. And I don't think that's going to be immediate, but if that's the goal here, you can really start to see how valuable he becomes because the nets do not have a player like this on their roster uh, in, in any aspect that can do all of the things as well as we project Noah Klein to be able to do like Trendon Watford ball handling and, you know, energy. Great. Not a good defender. 
like Ben Simmons, what he does, amazing. Not sure if he can be healthy, right? All these things are factors. Noah Clowney does represent like this, this best version of all the skills that I think the Nets and the Nets fan base have looked for in a front court player for probably a decade, like taking away superstar talent you acquire. They have not had a guy like this in generations for this team, like potentially. I know it's all potential, but that skill set matters, and the Nets have not been able to find that in their front court. They've played undersized small ball five lineups over and over again because you didn't have this mold of guy. Yeah. So like when you, and when you look at like, let's, you know, let's say you compare it to the Claxton minutes, right. Which is like always kind of trend on the low side for a few different reasons. Foul trouble gets, gets in his way sometimes, by the way, that's the case. A lot, a lot of times yeah. with like sort of true fives. It's, it's really hard to hit high end minutes potential because one, you're more susceptible to getting in foul trouble just because you're closer to the basket, right? That's just sort of a, you know, geographic problem more than anything right. else. Um, two, it's a much more physical part of the game than these other games, which i.e. the fouls, but also just the physicality is much more. If you need to operate in the post, constantly going for rebounds, got your bodying up against the other fives, it's just a more physical and taxing thing. And that's just going to be a more difficult way to stay on the court where Clowney is a little bit more immune to that um the minutes uh, the minutes churn let's say uh, or getting buzzed off the minutes is that we, we've talked about this and you just actually mentioned it is where he's able to actually play the four because he can shoot the threes because he can actually space the floor you can pair him with claxton like a guy like claxton is the physicality is going to be a little bit of an issue but also the combinational optionality is going to be a, an issue too you just can't play him with certain guys right. like you can't play right. no you can't play noah Clowney. I mean, theoretically, you can't play him with Ben Simmons, but like you can't play him with Ben Simmons. You can't play him with De'Aaron Sharp. There's already guys in the Nick lineup. You sorry, you said no client. Just clarify. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah my bad. That yeah, good correction. No, you can't play Nick Claxton with Ben Simmons. You can't play him with De'Aaron Sharp. Yeah. Like you're also you're already knocking out a certain percentage of guys that you just can't play them with. So if you're gonna play the other guy, he's got to go off the court, right? Clowney doesn't run into this problem. Like he, there is he can play with everybody on the team. And when you can play with everyone, that's why, you know, three threes and fours uh, in the league, especially like versatile wings, like the really great guys are the best because you can't scheme them out. They can play yeah. with every combination on the team. It's why they're the most valuable guy in the world it, um, outside of just generational talents like Curry or Jokic or guys like this who operate yeah. in Embiid that operate. On, and they're so good that you just can't get them off the court. Everyone else in between is you get the chance to stay on the court longer when you can play with more combinations. Clowney already represents this. We, you know, you, you specifically said he could start over DFS because, oh, you can envision him starting at the four. He can guard fours. He can switch everything. He can shoot threes. So he's not going to be a space clogger. And now the minutes upside is much higher because yeah. you're not going to get combo. You're not going to get comboed out of rotations. Right. And by the way, that, that that's what, as you mentioned, all those players on the Brooklyn Nets roster, that's what's plagued them. Hey, we got guys that can do some things, guys that are talented, guys that have value. Well, okay. As long as you don't have one or two or three more guys like that on your roster where you're constantly kind of shuffle it or as the Brooklyn Nets did at points early last season say maybe we will play two guys that are non-shooters on the floor together let's see how it works out it, it it doesn't and that's why Noah Clowney becomes so critical what would be the best combinations for Noah Clowney going into this season who are players that could share the court with him and potentially not only help expand his game but benefit their games as well we'll take a look at that to close out the episode in just one moment for that, talk about our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And this time, FanDuel's got a little something different for you now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers, mm -hmm. all of them, that's mm -hmm. everyone out there. And if you're not a FanDuel customer, I don't even know what to tell you at this point. But all FanDuel customers mm -hmm. can bet $5 and you're going to get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and TV and YouTube TV. That's right. Three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV with YouTube TV base plan. You'll be able to watch every regular season game Sunday afternoon out of market in market, whatever you want. All you need is a Google account. We all got one of those and a current form of payment. You can cancel any time. Look, you're not going to find better deals than this. Grab that three week free trial of NFL Sunday took it right ticket right now from FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and download America's number one sports book. All right, as we tie a pretty little bow on our Locked On Nets episode, talking about Noah Clowney, the obviously bright future that he has, but what are the expectations for year number two? So you mentioned it there. I mean, I, I want to touch on some of the, the other players on this current construction of the roster that can benefit him, obviously. But when you look back at those last seven games and that 
12 points per night. Like baseline. What is your baseline coming into this season expectation? Because we did our minute shares. I had him starting. You had him coming off the bench. I think by the end of the year, you and I will look more similar in terms of what the lineups look like. But how high of a bar do you want to set for him if we were going to say, this is his stat line prediction, double-digit score that can be in that bucket after we said who, who can join Cam Thomas in putting some points up? We intentionally left Noah Clowney out for this specific discussion. He may be the other brightest possible player that you could say has the opportunity to take a leap, especially if this offensive and defensive work comes together this upcoming season. Yeah, so I think I mean we again we disagree a little bit. Of this some of it's form over function, but like it's not really worth getting back into. I think they will start things off slowly again with him. I think he will be like something like the sixth, the seventh guy off the bench, something like or sorry, sorry the seventh man, seventh eighth guy, right? Like and not starting just because of age, veterans, money, all this other stuff. He's, and he, by the way, he's twenty years old, and again, there's no rush. I, like putting a ton of tread on these tires doesn't even make sense right now, just because if you see That's him as true. part of the long term sure. plan, like managing the minutes now is in sort of non-critical games is pretty important too. Let's not just, you know, the, the, again, like the tread on the tires analogy, I think is correct. There's no reason to run it out there for long minutes, risk injury, all this other stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, the one thing I'll say on that is is because I think I was say fans will. I'll push back on. He's twenty years old. He can go ahead and he can run big minutes. But I would say there's there should be a balance of games he plays in that you know quote unquote matter versus it shouldn't be in the dumpster time games that he's automatically thrown out there for the extra minute runs in those games. I actually think you should treat him more on the side of hey. When we're competitive, when we're building, when we're working, you're out there and you're seeing those reps, but we're not just going to burn you for 40 in a game that we lose by 25. I'm just saying it's a difference of playing 24 minutes or 35 minutes, right? Like sure. you just don't need to do those extra 10. If you yeah. in, in seasons like this, you can get plenty of development out of minutes in the 20s and not run run those sort of like higher end risks either short term and long term. That's that's all I mean. Yeah. And so I think he starts I think they start him off a little slowly just because of the way the roster is going to be built. I think he probably is actually probably starting by the end of the year once like trades are made and all this other stuff because it's unlikely they're going to bring in like more talent if they get rid of guys like Cam and DFS and Schroeder and all these other guys. Like the talent pool is not going to get better this year. And so I think he is starting by at some point during this year either either because of injury to somebody else or because they just ended up offloading some of the guys who might be perceived as blockers for for him uh in the lineup. I think that it's realistic to I mean if we're just even starting at those last 7 games at 30 he was where he was playing 30 minutes and he went 12 and 6. I, I mean a slightly fewer min I mean assume a little some regression on or you know, maybe a decent amount of regression on the three point shooting but an uptick in volume maybe makes up for it right so like not going to shoot 47 percent, but also might take three three-point attempts instead of 2.4 right, right, right. <laughs> like i think that's a realistic trade-off based on the number based on just like the minutes i think something like you know 26 minutes a game and going something like 12 and 6 is a realistic option with the understanding that he's not an on-ball creator so he's going to rely a little bit around the flow of the offense to get his which yeah. is always a risk with some of these bigs. It's like you can be – it's just so hard for bigs to like really – even stretch wings like this, if you want to call them that, which is not even. But it's just – you are you are susceptible to who the other four guys on the court are. Yes. And if they are not able to sort of shot create, then you're going to be behind the eight ball a little bit too. So I think like those numbers are realistic. I don't think he's like a 20-point scorer or any stretch of the imagination right now. I'm not even sure he ever is. But the – I think like those numbers with some blocks and steals is like easily in the range of outcomes and would be exciting. Honestly, if he was able to do it in his age 20 season, I, I think so, so for me, I like to go different. I say, you know, you look at the Indiana Pacers game. He played 17 minutes. He went <laughs> seven to nine, three or four from deep, knocked down five yeah. or seven at the line, had 10 rebounds in that one, 22 points. If it's me, I, I, I probably go that way. And honestly, it's really the merging of both you, you think the 22 and 10 in 17 minutes is like I, sort of like the realistic expert. Ah, that makes sense. It's not bad. And I also think in the meets us in the middle, right? You don't want to play high minutes. So we'll just do it better, faster and, and less, you know, less irritation on the ball. Okay. Well, so your way. solution is just to play fewer minutes, but have them to be the greatest 17 minutes yeah. that anyone's ever played in the history of basketball. Basically, yeah. Check that I think down. that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Think slash realistic. And honestly, yeah. 
I don't want to put pre- no hot seat for Jordy Fernandez, but if this isn't the plan, I don't know what we're doing. Have him do the best that's ever been. Yeah, show him the play. tape of that. Just show him the tape of that game and just say, hey, just again. go do that every game. <laughs> you do that every game. Like, Honestly, I, mean, I can be I, We heard about this, by the way. I think it was one of the mistakes they made because they didn't go back and say, hey, buddy, what happened? Like, what, what was that game against the Sacramento Kings when you only went three for eight in 35 minutes and gave seven Disgusting. points with 10 rebounds? Ten, like, okay, 10 rebounds. I guess that's okay. But what are we doing, buddy? You just accomplished this in 17. Um, no, I, I, I do like where you're at. I think what's what's interesting about him, and again, unlike some other players, so unlike a Nicholas Claxton who can maybe set a pick out at the top of the key, he can be a role going to the basket. So can Dayron Sharp, but you're not going to then fade out into space and provide more of an opportunity maybe to be available for an outside look. Dorian Finney-Smith, He's more of on the offensive end. He's a traditional three and D. Hey, I'm going to do the work on the defensive end, and then I'm going to go set up and wait for the ball, right? The the skill set offensively that Noah Clowney has is what gives him this interesting versatility to bring on on the offensive end where you say, oh, I can be, and I think you're right. It is more the function of the rest of the offense, but every every so often, every few possessions, I can dip my toe into it, get involved, and create a bit of a wrinkle that, frankly, regardless of him, the Brooklyn Nets offense has lacked ever since we got rid of the superstars, right? It was, well, we all have our function and we all do our thing. You know, what if we need to go off script? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I guess give it to Cam Thomas and see if he can beat three defenders, right? Yeah. So that's the nice thing about it on the offensive end for Noah Clowney and why I think seeing him with, with Cam Thomas is going to be really fun and exciting. I We are have to be elated to see the way he can play off of Nicholas Claxton as well if he gets into those starting lineup or starting rotation type minutes or whatever combination you want to get there. That's the part that I really like. And we mentioned him the other day as being maybe one of the spike candidates. If he is on the bench and he is coming off there, another guy we say maybe seventh in uh, Trenton Watford, I like those two guys playing together as well because Watford – as much as he is a bull in a china shop, also seems to want to be an all-phase player. So you want to get out in transition and give Noah Clowney some rim-running opportunities? There were some real electric flash moments of Noah Clowney getting a few steps going towards the basket and giving the fan base something to get really excited about. So I think there's a lot of things here based on who he is as a player and his skill set that says, yeah, you can find a lot of ways to develop him. And maybe to your point, doesn't matter if it's starting lineup or not, you can put him with players that allow him to continue to accentuate what he does so well. And again, yeah, you can do it in 15 I, minutes, do it in 15. I, I figure out the right pocket. I just think succeed. I tell you, buddy, they should make you the coach. I mean, that's all that's I, it's, I, it's, we've it's, been it's, saying it's, this, and fans have recommended it that we get involved here. But you know, Jordy Fernandez, we feels like literally that easy. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Lots of stuff to get excited about for Noah Clowney. Obviously, look, Nets aren't making any moves right now. It doesn't matter. We're coming at you all summer long that's just and how we roll go say, say obvi i believe now so you can try that one out. i'm sure your daughter's giving you what's that the one. word obvi because saying obvious mm-hmm. would be like too much work for the youth of, of, of america so yeah, i actually think that's one of those situations where actual youth are not saying that but older people are, oh are think that they're to, saying are, it are late to, i'll ask my kid she'll she'll be a good she's a good because she says a bunch of words that i've just literally never heard of and that's how it's actually being spoken and so when you come in with avi the fact that i've even heard it means that's probably a good chance the kids are not saying it okay yeah we are going to get out of here uh much appreciate this this is hey this is why you come in here for, for, you know five days a week for, for it's not just for to basketball get this, to get this kind of like you know these cultural touch points um <laughs> to, if you want to just like get a little window into the zeitgeist uh come here for the end of the podcast we are going to get out of here uh make sure you're subscribed on youtube make Make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen to the podcast. Leave a review, five stars. If it's going to be less than five stars, absolutely hit the skids. No need to even have you come in. But if you want to leave a review and you can leave a review, make sure that's five stars. Locked on Nets wherever you listen to the podcast. 40 is the old age of youth. 50, the youth of old age. Why that is Victor Hugo. <laughs> One of the all-time great poets, RIP. We will be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, basketball.